गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ सौम्या तिवारी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर स्कूल ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज उत्तर प्रदेश राष्ट्रीय टंडन ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी टूडे विल विल कंटिन्यू आर लेक्चर फ्रॉम प्रीवियस वन ऑन बिजनेस इन्वामेंट ब्लॉक वन यूनिट टू बिफोर मूविंग टू मिक्सड इकॉनमी इन इंडिया वी विल डिस्कस वट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाई द कॉन्सेप्ट कैपिटलिज्म एंड सोशलिज्म capitalism means the factors of production such as land labor and capital goods that are governed by the government uh, private sectors and they are used solely for the purpose of economic growth as well as for income generation in, as well as profit generation on the other hand socialism means the factors of production that are governed by government state interventions and are solely done for the purpose of social welfare as of the society so what is do you understand by mixed economy mixed economy is the best of the both world where is capitalism and socialism are two extreme mixed economy is best is at the center of the both features it takes the features or elements of both economy and generate the best economy structure where the means of factors of production such as land labor and capital goods are governed by the state government central government as well as by private sector so in mixed economy the means of production and distribution are shared between the private sector and the government it combines the capitalism and socialism aiming to strike a balance between individual initiative and state intervention to promote economic growth and social welfare of the society so it is strike a balance between capitalism and socialism and it strikes a balance between private sector as well as government sector and it formulate towards it grows towards economic growth as well as social welfare next is what are the reasons for economic planning in india why india want to structuralize or plan uh, for the growth there are many reasons that have been considered first is in eradication of poverty and unemployment the planners understood the planners understood the concept that there is need to address the poverty as well as unemployment for that purpose need to uplift the vast unimprovised population and by bringing them opportunities for employment in various sectors thus they can increase or enhance their living standard next is second rapid industrialization and economic growth here industrialization mean growth of the industries uh, having multiple industries set up uh, and economic growth means modernizing the industry sector enhancing earlier it was our country india country was an agrarian economy where the uh, income was generated through agriculture only so it was essential for indian to enhance their gdp to enhance their income through industrialization therefore the transformation from agrarian economy to industrialization was essential and therefore it will lead to growth and as well as increase in productivity next is self reliance and import substitution after independence it was important for india to become self reliant country that means they need not have to rely on other countries for the import of goods they need to produce goods by themselves and internally for that purpose they need to construct and establish domestic industries as much as possible and thus import substitution goods should be produced which will lead to increase in econo indian economy independence next fourth one equitable distribution of income and wealth it was important for india to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor thus becoming more inclusive country and becoming a just society in the world next is modernization of agriculture whereas industrialization is important as well as agriculture modernization is also important because it was at that time the main income owner of our country for that purpose you need to enhance the gdp and that can be done only by modernizing the agriculture 
for that purpose one need to establish more technological advancement irrigation facilities and infrastructure support to supplement the modernization of agriculture activities next infrastructure development here means building of road dam bridges etc that will help the growth of the economy of india next stabilization of prices and balanced regional development here it means you need to control and stabilize the prices of our country by keeping in check the inflation and deflation as well as keeping the balanced regional development by over all across all the cities states and regions of the country next promotion of foreign trade it is important for india to become a participant at global level and this can be only done when it needs it steps towards the globalization of the society and it can be only done when it promote foreign trade for that purpose it need to establish a healthy relation with foreign trade relationship as well as promote export goods that can increase the foreign exchange next is conservation of natural resources and environment at that time mainly the sustainable growth and sustainable development was the main aim all over the world for that purpose we need to industrialize and modernize modernize agriculture as much as possible keeping in view and point that the environment is not harm not degraded and for that purpose ecological balance is essential to be sustained next is economic planning in india economic planning means that the allocation of resources as well as formulation of policies by the government for the purpose to achieve the socio economic goals what are the main components is first is allocation of resources next is formulation of policies and the last one is to achieve specific socio economic goals that means economic policy planning in india it aims to coordinate and direct economic activities to ensure balanced growth the main major aim for the economic planning is have a balanced growth next is efficient resource utilization as i already told allocation of resources in the best possible way is important efficient use or resource utilization and equitable distribution of benefit that means there is no one is poor and rich and equitable distribution of all the benefits to all the citizens of india next in developing economy like india planning becomes crucial to address the structural challenges earlier india was not up to where modernized as it is today there was very struct there was very structural challenges that it has to face and develop itself as a developing country for that purpose it needs to plan its economic structure therefore it has to address the structural challenges promote inclusive development and propel the nation towards sustainable development sustainable progress and development next is what is the significance of planning why it is important all these topics have been already dealt or in the previous slide let's move on again first is the resource allocation resource allocation that means using the resource in the best proper way because resources are depleting next infrastructure development without development one cannot adhere that the economic growth of the country balanced regional growth that means the growth of all the countries across all states and regions are necessary next is social welfare that means the basic amenities of uh, every citizen should be provided such as growth uh, such as providing sanitation basic needs uh, education healthcare all these facilities to uplift the living being and standard of living of a citizen industrialization and modernization on one hand industrialization is essential for the growth of any country that is struck, uh, that is increasing the uh, domestic uh, sectors increasing the domestic uh, 
industries etc and modernization of agriculture sector these are all important but keeping in view that the sustainable growth and development is not harm that means the environment and regional uh, development is also adhere next is stability and price control we need to keep in mind that the price is equal all over the india as well as it is stable it does not influenced by the inflation and deflation and it helps the growth of the economy as a whole next is inception of economic planning in india as we all know after independence it was due to our structural challenges and inclusiveness development as well as sustainable progress we need to have some economic planning so after independence in 1947 it was essential for us to have economic planning structure or model in our economy for that purpose a planning commission was established in 1950 planning commission of india was established in 1950 to formulate and implement the five year plans these five year plans main objective was to have the economic growth and social welfare of the citizen of india and these plans set out the specific target and policies to achieve socio economic objective and lay the foundation for india's economic growth in the development next is nehru mahalo nobel strategy development 1956 to 61 this was the second year five year plan and it was established in 1956 and up to 1961 though this model act as a road map for 1956 to 1990 because this model help in the growth of the economy up to lpg that means liberalization privatization and globalization the nehru mano willis model also known as second year plan 1956-61 also known as heavy industry model why it is known as heavy industry model because the major uh, concept or the aim of this or objective of this model was to set up most industry and heavy capital good industry as much as possible because nehru uh, and mano willis strategy model was mainly focused that india india will grow only and its economic growth will be done only when the capital goods are produced and promoted and sold etc so for that purpose it was important for them to produce heavy industry goods and uh, structure the heavy industry in india and it was the guiding economic strategy in india from 1950 to 956 to 1990 that means from the period of second year plan to the period of lpg it was designed by india first prime minister jawahar lal nehru and the eminent statistician prashanta chandra mahanobis the strategy aimed to promote rapid industrialization and self sufficient to reduce dependency on imports and foster domestic industries so major aim was to set up the heavy industries and through providing the as much as domestic industry as possible and foster more dependency on exports and less dependency on imports and producing goods as internally as much as possible though according to mahanobis strategy in short run consumer with sector are more productive than the capital goods sector that means those goods uh, the investment in consumer goods if are done more for example in short run beta c is greater than beta k that means beta c here means the investment in consumer goods is greater than the investment in capital goods then the growth rate economic growth is more for india whereas in the long run it is different from the short run here the whereas in the long run it is different from the short run here the lambda k should be greater than the lambda c capital goods 
or and normally it is lavender that means investment in capital goods plus investment in consumer good is equals to 1 this is generally that we need to invest in capital goods as well as we need to invest in consumer goods in order to have economic growth but in the long run we say that investment in capital goods should be more than the investment in uh, consumer goods and in the short run it is emphasized in Mahanumbolis model that investment in consumer goods should be more than investment in capital goods. Next is vision and goals of the strategy. What vision and goals uh, of the Nehru and Mahavalis, Mahanubolis strategy was? First is industrial growth, it growth to promote industrialize and enhance the contribution of the industrial sector to the national economy. Second is capital goods production. It focused more on capital goods production as in the long run it will only lead to economic growth to emphasize the production of capital goods such as machinery and equipment to support industry's expansion and modernization. Next is technology development to encourage the adoption and development of advanced technology in industry to improve the productivity and efficiency. Without technology development, it was it will when to talk about modernization and industrialization. In employment generation, to generate employment opportunities through industrial growth, reducing unemployment and poverty. Next is sustainable growth to ensure long-term sustainable growth to conserving natural resources and avoiding resource depletion. After having all the structure to produce capital goods, heavy industry setup, it was essential to keep that sustainable development is done. That means keeping the present, uh, prospering the needs of the present as well as keeping in view the needs of the future too. Next are what are, were the success of the strategy as well as the challenges of the strategy. For the success of the strategy, we can see there was an industrial growth after independence, there was capital goods production and the human capital development as well as infrastructural development and defense preparedness. On the other hand, there are several challenges that needed to be faced by them during that period. First was resource constraint. We were not rich enough to have resources as well as to have all the resources that are required for the setup of industries and modernization as soon as possible. On the other hand, inefficient public sector, there was not a large number of public sectors and if they were, they were inefficient. Next is agriculture neglect. We focus more on having heavy capital sector goods rather than having focus on agriculture sector. Next is technological dependency. As we have already told, we wanted to become import substitution, uh, promoting import substitution rather than having the technology uh, in, uh, from uh, importing it from other countries. We were more focused to prom produce these technology advancement by them ourselves. Next is balance of payment crisis. We were already in balance of payment crisis at that time and it was impossible for us to become, to, uh, to uh, overcome the situation. Next is criticism and limitation, Vakil Brahmananda model. The criticism was famously given by the Vakil Brahmananda model and it is also known as wage goods model because wage goods, here he maintained the two main concepts during his criticism of, of Nehru and Mahanubolis strategy. First was wage goods. What do you understand by the wage good? This means, first, what do you understand by the wage good? This means goods that are or may be by or bought by wages. Goods that are may be bought by wages. 
what do you understand by the concept wage gap it means that these goods which could be bought that means goods such as consumer goods these goods demand is more but the supply of these goods are low that means the government is producing heavy industry goods they are not focusing on those capital goods or those goods which can be bought by wages therefore the demand therefore the demand for these goods are uh, increasing and the supply of these goods are decreasing for that purpose the industry needs to acknowledge that consumer goods are also important and therefore they need to produce these goods as well as the capital goods for the equitable growth of the society and economic growth next the criticism are inequality and poverty that means despite industrial growth income inequality persisted and poverty remained a significant challenge indicating a limited impact on inclusive development as we have already studied in our previous slide that in poverty and unemployment was our main feature that we need and the objective that for which the economic planning was set up and but after the uh, set up of nehru and mahanobolis strategy it was not overcome the poverty and inequality the rich become richer and the poor become poorer and it continued neglect of small and medium enterprises it focused mainly on the large sectors industries and heavy industries and neglect of marginalized small and medium industry which could have created a job creation and regional development for any region to develop it is essential for the development of small and medium enterprises of that that area and region next lack of export orientation if you do not promote import how will export be enhanced or increased for that purpose the hindrance of import substitution led to the uh, act as the hindrance for the export orientation too the emphasis on import substitution limited india export oriented growth hindering its integration into the global economy one cannot only export goods without importing goods thus import substitution was good but that can lead to export backwardness or export uh, fall next is environmental concern rapid industrialization without sufficient environmental regulation resulted in environmental degradation and resource depletion we mainly focuses on industrialization and modernization setting up heavy industries and thus it lead to growth but lead to our sustainable development fall as well as environmental concern raises many environmental concern are uh, resulted in environmental degradation and resource depletion next slow pace of technological innovation same as import substitution we followed we led it lead to hindrance in technological advancement or innovation too the strategy of import substitution approach hindered the development of innovation innovative technologies and limited the competitiveness of indian industries in the global market if you do not promote import how can you import technologies uh, innovation and this resulted in the downfall of indian industries next is emergence of contemporary economic reform in 1980s and early 1990s the global economic landscape underwent significant transformation several factors influenced india shift to economic reform after following the five year plan in 1990 the the objective or goals were not reached or not were not fulfilled as we wanted therefore it was important to have some major economic reform and thus there are some major shift that can be seen in economic reform first is globalization the world india moved toward globalization producing its goods and providing uh, producing its goods as well as distributing it at global level that means import export of goods and involving itself in foreign trade at major part next is liberalization trend that means decentralizing deregulating the government licensing policies providing more liberty to the private sectors to enter the market next balance of payment crisis 
fiscal deficit and balance of payment crisis were also needed to be heard and therefore some reforms were needed to be done next technological advancement we were lagging behind in technological advancement because of the import substitution factor therefore these factors are also needed to be done next soviet union disintegration this means earlier soviet union were the major partners for our export of goods and their foreign trade relation but after the disintegration of the soviet union in uh, union it became very much impossible for our country to have trade foreign trade at global level what are the core principles of lpg reforms we need to understand what do you mean by liberalization globalization and privatization for that purpose let's move on liberalization reducing government control deregulating market and fostering a more open and competitive business environment that means governor government that means government control over the market is reduced that means government has less say in the growth of the industries on the other hand deregulating market that means the policies all the procedures and the regulation all have been reduced as much as possible for the promotion of industries and market fostering a more open and competitive us environment that means letting the private sectors involved more so that they can have better business environment and be more co con competitive to produce a productive goods quality goods next privatization transferring ownership and management of state owned enterprises to the private sectors to improve efficiency and performance that means the government moved towards transferring its ownership and management to the and management of the state owned enterprises those uh, enterprises that are owned by the government or the state to private sectors to improve efficiency and performance there were many enterprises that were at loss and they were needed to be revitalized and that can be done only through privatization next globalization integrating india with global economy through trade and investment liberalization and encouraging foreign direct investment so the indian need to back itself and present itself participate at the global level and that can be only done by the promoting itself in trade and investment and enhancing or encouraging the fdi that means foreign direct investment these are several measures that g3 lpg concept have been done first is liberalization measure trade liberalization liberalizing trade as much as follows as much as possible industrialization deregulation uh, licensing promoting license deregulating all the uh, uh, deregulation of all the policies and uh, rules and regulation foreign exchange reforms encouraging import as well as export and promoting itself at global level to financial sector reforms keeping in check the inflation and deflation keeping in check all the measures for providing the price stability as well as keeping in check the financial deficit of our country next is privatization initiative first is this is investment and the second is strategic sales that means investing allowing the private sector to invest in the state owned enterprises that is also known as disinvestment and allowing them to have strategic sales to increase their output as well as the production and distribution of goods and services next is aspects of globalization embraced globalize what are the reforms in globalization fdi was introduced and encouraged that means foreign direct investment was encouraged people were uh, indian goods were promoted and investment in industries in our country were promoted encouraged through fdi many many enterprises or many sectors where the government were only allowed to produce goods 
were provided to uh, and encouraged for the foreigners country foreign countries to uh, invest in next is export promotion promotion next is export promotion promotion of goods uh, and import of goods as well as export of goods were also done and promoted next is trade agreement trade agreements bilateral trade unilateral trade every agreements were also done and promoted what are the major economic reforms first is industry policy reforms at industry level what are the reforms that have been done first abolition of industry licensing for most industries licensing was removed all the private sectors were allowed to invest and to uh, establish the industries the reservation of certain industries from the public sectors there are many sectors that only um, government are allowed to uh, allowed to produce goods those uh, those industries and the sectors their private sectors private enterprises were allowed to establish themselves establishment of special economic zones to promote export oriented manufacturing these are the economic zones where the special um, rebates or tax rebate subsidies are uh, etc are provided for the purpose of promoting exempt policy import export policy therefore these are the major industrial sector reform policy reform next is trade policy reform reduction of import tariff and removal of quantitative restriction that means removing import tariff so that the goods can be bought easily and technological as we have already studied in previous slide the technological advancement cannot be done because of the import substitution within our country therefore import tariff were reduced and which led to the better quality of goods to be uh, pro, uh, purchased in our country next introduction of exim policy to promote export introduction of exim policy import and exports of goods were uh, enhanced and led to the better economic growth of our country liberalization of foreign trade to facilitate integration into the global economy this the foreign trade establishment of foreign trade and having good relation with foreign countries for trade purpose led to facilitate better integration of the indian economy in the global market it was essential for india to bench itself and stand at the global level for the growth of our country next physical and monetary policy challenges first is physical consolidation measures to reduce physical deficit and improve physical discipline that means we need to keep in the financial measures check for that purpose we need to have reduced physical deficit that means our expenditure should not be more than our revenue it should be kept in check therefore inflation and deflation can also be controlled next is introduction of physical responsibility and budget management act to ensure physical prudence this act was mainly introduced to have financial stability check within our the country adoption of inflation targeting as the key monetary policy of framework this is generally done to control the inflation rate in the india for example if the goods inflation rate is high that means the consumers have more purchasing power to buy goods therefore government need to reduce the expenditure on the goods uh, as well as increase the interest rate bank rate so that the consumer have less purchasing power which will result in the reduction of inflation on the other hand when there is deflation that means consumer has less purchasing power the government tries to uh, uh, tries to expand their expenditure providing the public sectors and public people more money so that they can buy and this will regulate the deflation in our country next is financial sector reform the first is point is liberalization of interest rate to enhance the efficiency of the financial system that means interest rate we have already talked about this topic in inflation targeting as well in interest rate will be enhanced only when there is inflation and it will be reduced when there is deflation so that the public general consumers have more purchasing power liberalization of interest rate to enhance the efficiency of financial system 
next is strengthening of banking and financial institution to promote financial stability it is important for india to strengthen their banking system to have reform and produce and promote financial institution having better financial stability non performing assets are disallowed next is introduction of new financial product and services to expand the scope of financial market that means new products financial products such as in uh, investment in swap or um, options etc other such financial products should be and services should be promoted this can lead to investment in the economy and lead to multiplying of the investment and growth of the economy next is there are few major policies in today that have helped in achieving the goals and these are first national infrastructure pipeline to boost the infrastructure development and attract private investment this this major uh, policies or uh, uh, this major policies was developed to boost the development and attract private investment in the economy next is atmanirbhar bharat self reliant india india from after independence want to become self reliant as much as possible relying only on export rather than import campaign to promote domestic manufacturing and reduce import dependence it is trying to become more dependent as much as possible and make the country economic independence pradhan mantri jandhan yojana for financial inclusion and direct benefit transfer to the needy people this yojana was mainly promoted for to um, eliminate the poverty and provide to increase um, the balance or the, to bridge the gap between poor poor and rich for that purpose a uh, government also tried to finance those people who are below the poverty line and trying to become more inclusive economy by providing them benefit transfer to their account next is made in india initiative to encourage man- manufacturing and generate employment opportunities this make in india concept was to encourage as employment as possible and help in the growth of the economy by generating income for the economy startup india entrepreneurs were allowed to have steps towards global uh, towards the income generation of indian economy to have say in gdp also for that purpose startup india to support the growth of innovative startups and entrepreneurs the government tried to encourage the youth of our countries to build in better structure of india for the future prospect therefore this is for only today we will meet you in next i will meet you in the next session thank you